The first being uh, on the issue of AMA sanctions that were raised by uh, Umpondo. And I will tie this with his calls for the opposition to unite. And I would say, uh, I want to believe, let me say, citizens in a country do not just unite or don't need to just unite when it comes to trying to remove a, a sitting government or a ruling party, but there should be some issues around which they unite, and these are supposed to be ideological issues. You might not be sharing an ideology, but you need to have certain specifics where you say for the benefit of the country or for the love of the country and these people, we unite around these things. The first one being uh, AMA sanctions, as I have said, uh, I think as Zimbabweans, especially political parties, what should be a rallying call for us is whatever brings together the people, whatever betters the life of the people, and we also need to unite against everything that affects the life uh, of Avant. And we would be propagandists for the West to say oh, there are no sanctions in Zimbabwe. And if you are in doubt, read a document called Zidera. Uh, it doesn't speak to any individual. It speaks about the government of Zimbabwe, officials in the government of Zimbabwe, and this is the basis on which uh, AMA para status, other than the, the looting of ZANU PF, were dismantled. So we need to agree with their sanctions, and we need to unite around the removal of sanctions, whether ZANU PF is there or not. And we need to also understand Utama sanctions are far one journey as Zimbabwe. Don't buy the lie about human rights abuses. The worst ever human rights abuse that happened in Zimbabwe was the Kukurangi Hundi massacre, in which 20,000 people died. Hundreds of thousands were displaced. There was a media blackout from the West. Why? Because they didn't care about Zimbabweans. <clears throat> All they care about was keeping the hegemon which Mugabe was, pre was preserving for them. Then, in, 2000, in 1998, when Mugabe militarily intervenes in the DRC, where he was fighting rebels sponsored by Rwanda, in Rwanda under a puppet of the West called uh, Paul Kagame, they then said, because they were looting uh, DRC, Ama Minerals at DRC, they said, is Zimbabwe is becoming a problem. Let's sanction them. You will read this, it, it states that the rest came as additional issues, but that's where the sanctions were. And over Umpondo, you are from Zabu. Let's say, Tina, if Joshua Nkomo was alive today, would he have supported these sanctions? If, when he ran to the UK for the asylum, when his people were dying, 20,000 Zimbabweans dying, he didn't call for sanctions. Would he support these? Akona Maji, nah. Right, then we move on to say, uh, we also need to correctly structure the argument on the stolen elections. Are we saying these elections were stolen from Triple C, in which case it would mean that this is a Triple C fight in which Minaja Omundu at TPFO as a journalist have got nothing to do with? But if we say these elections were stolen from Zimbabweans, then every Zimbabwean must fight against those who stole the elections because you stole my right to choose a representative. You didn't steal from Chamisa the right to get into State House or from Triple C the right to have more representatives in the House of Assembly, but you stole from me my right to choose somebody to represent me as I want. Uh, then to Zapu, uh, what is it that you are doing? You have already alluded to the call against the theft of elections, but we believe that as a former liberation movement, you have a role to play, especially where ECCC has been accused of being a puppet of the West. You've got a role to play to say, ANC, we were with you in the struggle. Izanu PF has diverted, has derailed the liberation struggle train. They are now doing as they want, but Tina S. Zapo, we raised these particular issues it's not only Triple C, but the whole opposition in Zimbabwe, including the citizens of Zimbabwe that are suffering 
under ZANU PF, then you dilute this narrative of saying uh, these who are calling for a regime change are agents of a regime change who are being sponsored by the West. Then uh, the next is uh, Triple C. Why is it that when times are normal and you are going to elections, you don't care about the other opposition parties? You always call them puppets of ZANU PF, surrogates of ZANU PF, vote splitters, and only. And you also declare that you are going to win. I listen to Chamisa saying Nanga Kwa has got no chance to rig the elections this time. Then just before the elections, he declares that he's not going to accept any election which puts Mnangagwa ahead of him. Then the next thing, after voting, he writes on Twitter, blow by blow accounts, claiming that he's in the lead, he's winning despite the rigging. Come election announcement, he has lost, then he goes back and says, I was rigged. All along, in 2018, he said the same thing. Morgan Swangirai said he's going to win 74% with or without the rigging in 2013. Now Chamisa does the same thing, and then he comes back. He complains of rigging. Does this not then uh, give a neutral like me the feeling that these are sour grapes? He thought he was going to win, and then he has lost. And then soon after losing, he says, we've got the V11s. They put us in the lead. We have, we are collating them. We are taking them to court. Eventually, he's got nothing, and he's now going to Twitter demanding V11s from Zek on Twitter, which means that he doesn't have anything. Because if you claim that you've been rigged, you must prove you don't win elections because the other guy played foul. You win because you outpolled them. And vote figures are scientific, which means these V11s are the ones that you should say. Yes, there were gross irregularities, but based on the results that we have, we won here, they tried to manipulate, but these are the V11s. Then it turns out, in more than, maybe you're going to also respond to that, in more than a thousand polling stations, you didn't have polling agents. Now, which means you didn't have these V11s that you are claiming to have. Then how does that then keep the the trust that people are putting on you because you've always betrayed them. Uh, then uh, I would also say as a, a passing point that I believe the only way that we can go forward, let's forget about this vote splitting uh, narrative which doesn't exist. If Zimbabwe were to go back to the proportional representation, proportional representation mechanism and devolution of power, I believe that we're going to have more parties, even these so-called Smolanyana parties, going into parliament and diluting this bipolar political setup, which pits one pole against the other in a way that at the end of the day, we have toxic politics without any care for the people.